the cooch cause a big problem on the golf course. Uh, they essentially make it unplayable, make it very, very difficult for people to want to come out and pay the green fees in order to, to play and deal with the mess that's left behind. It's very uncomfortable uh, when you leave the golf course to find that your, your equipment, your shoes, and your clothing has a lot of uh, bird residue left on it from <laughs> being on the golf course. There was so much coot poop on this green you couldn't putt. <laughs> I just turned around and left. There, there have been times at this golf course when the bird population has been really high that I have said four letter words under my breath more than once. And uh, I'm <laughs> it, it's just frustrating to try and play golf when you have instead of green a whole black fairway. Yeah, I'd say the biggest biggest issue is is their their damage to the green. Not only does it make it unplayable, not pleasant for people to be out here, but it costs the city money. Due to the number of coots and geese specifically, the the budget definitely has been um, been affected um, to to deal with those issues. Yes. Yeah, American coots will will eat the eat the greens down to dirt, essentially killing the sod, so they have to be repatched or reseeded. But the problem is you put re reseed and they'll just continue to, to eat the area. It, it is frustrating uh, when they're all on the fairway and you hit a nice shot and it hits a coot and just quits rolling. Um, or a goose, with a bigger target, and just stops dead. Mm -hmm. I've never hit a bird before, but it's pretty gross when you do and they're in the way you know, with the ball flight, the beginning of the ball flight. We witnessed the same thing last week uh, where a gentleman teed off and he had a, what you call, a low burner and unfortunately there was a coot that was in the way and it became a victim, so. <laughs> right on the tee box. Right on the tee box. <laughs> when I see a bird dead on the ground with, you know, their body on, open and stuff with, from, you know, a golfer hitting a ball into them, through them, it's really gross, so there's a lot of uh, disgusting things out in the course. From what I understand, we're actually on a, um, the migratory bird path that they take. Um, shoreline happens to be right on that pathway. Um, and so when they fly over and they see a lush green area, they tend to come here. We're seeing around anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000. And in worst case scenario, a few years back, we had 5,000 birds show up. Coots are migratory. They show up around, starting in about October, and stay until April, and then they, they leave. The geese are, are naturally migratory birds, but things have changed with their habitats, so they're, they're, they don't need to leave. They would normally leave to follow food, to find areas to nest. So we have areas here at the golf course with that fresh green grass, they have no incentive to leave. They're not a lot of predators. They have no incentive to leave, so they're staying on the course and feeding and using the area. Uh, coots, like I said, they're, they're here and then they go. Coots, are, they're a pest. They're a mess. And then you go out and play golf in the greens and they poop all over the greens. Horrible. <laughs> Humans are the ones with the problem with the birds. The birds having a great time. They love it out there. It's excellent habitat. <laughs> Not natural habitat, but habitat that they've adapted to living in and find it <laughs> very, very good for their life. I don't know what they can do about them because there's so many. There's thousands of birds out here and it's just like you can't get rid of, you know, every single one of them. Maybe put like different seed in the ground or something like that. Just, I don't know. So there's two things that we have to balance here. Number one is the overarching laws by, that are enforced by Fish and Wildlife Services. The other is the burrowing owls, which is a protected species. There's some things that we could do on the golf course that we haven't done that are legal, but because of the other ramifications it may have on a sensitive species, that we can't do it. We follow protocols set up by uh, Humane Society to try to do it as humane as possible. But of course, anytime you're doing uh, anything that's harming wildlife, you're going to have some uproar from it. But these are geese that technically shouldn't be here. They're, they're not migrating, so we need to do something to control their populations. We've tried a number of things. Um, the, 
golf course has hired dogs to come out and chase the birds. We have actually had a dog that was um, city property. We purchased a dog to try to scare the birds away. Um, we have tried um, to spray the grass with um, different materials that would hopefully not taste good for the birds. Um, that seemed to be um, not very effective. Um, we've also tried a more natural uh, which base product, which was garlic and pepper oils. Sprayed that on the green, had the kind of the same effect. You'd watch the coots, they'd feed on it for a minute. You'd see them kind of shake their head, but they'd continue feeding. Another issue we had with that is it killed the grass in some areas. Um, we have tried fogging machines. We've tried radio controlled boats in the, um, in the ponds. Uh, I heard a story one time that purple Kool-Aid, uh, the coots wouldn't, uh, didn't like purple Kool-Aid. So I, don't, so I figured, okay, so I bought purple Kool-Aid and I uh, was working at the driving range then and we had a lake in the back. So I went around the entire lake with purple, I chased the, all the coots in the water, went around with the purple Kool-Aid and they just walked right across it. So it doesn't work, I'm here to tell you. Um, decoy announcements that supposedly they don't like the sounds of certain things and we've blared that out didn't impact the birds at all. Um, we've sh tried lasers, coyote decoys. They've tried decoys that look like alligators. Apparently that works in areas where there's alligator. I don't have any alligators here, so I have a hard time seeing it work here. Um, owl decoys, mylar tape to try to make the, the colors and the movement scare the birds. No effect. Uh, we do what's called an egg addling program, where we go out, find nests, and if the eggs are not too far along to be addled, we take and we coat them with a vegetable oil, and then you leave them in the nest so that they can't develop the air sac inside the egg, and the the, the embryo essentially um, doesn't cease to it ceases to form. And we we one thing that is effective, but difficult to do on a golf course is actually turning on the sprinkler heads. They don't like it. We turn on the sprinkler heads. They will actually clear the area. You can't do that when there's golfers on the golf course. Well, I think you should change the law and be able to get rid of them, just eliminate them, because they're just a nuisance. I don't know what they are. I don't think they're good for anything. You can't eat them. <laughs> and they're just a mess. Terrible. Well, I think that they should come out here at night and get a shotgun and shoot all of them. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. You know, when I, when I go out and I see the golfers chasing them with their golf clubs and, and attempting to swing and hit the birds, that, that really bothers me because it's not their fault that they're here. I understand that they're making it an environment that you don't want to play golf on, but try not to take it out on the birds is, is where I'm at. And as of now, I think we're doing everything we can. <laughs> It's, it's tough to say uh, what's going to happen in the future with the coot population. I think if we're able to bring the golf course um, into better shape, um, will rounds go up? Most likely. I think that the word will get out among the, the golfing community and they will at least come back and try it again. We had a, a, a dad and his son today that told us that they were very pleased to see the difference in conditions. Last year they said they would never come back again. Uh, to hear a lot of negative feedback on their behavior from the golfers is, is really tough because it's not the bird's fault that they're here. We've created this environment for them and so we have to do our best to facilitate their needs as well as ours. Do I like seeing them out here? Do I like seeing the mess that they make? No, but birds are doing what birds do. Mm -hmm.